Hello and welcome. Welcome to Amy Howard at Home's Paintathon. I am really excited to be here with you today to show you a brand new finish, one you've never seen before, using a new product from Amy Howard at Home. This finish is going to transform your countertops and your bathroom vanities, a tabletop, and you can do a lot of different things with it. It's a very versatile finish. My name is Cindy and I am the creative owner of Provincial Designs where I love to take old discarded pieces of furniture and home decor, put a new finish on them and breathe new life into them again. So let's get started and let me show you this finish and this new product that we're going to be working with today. If you have something in your home that has a countertop like this, it's very old and chipped and dated and stained and scratched and it desperately needs a new finish on it. I think it even has some holes somewhere in it. It does. But you can take this old countertop and you can turn it into a beautiful marble looking countertop. Like this. And this is really easy to get this look with a new product that I'm going to go through with you today, step by step, and show you how you can get this finish in your own home. The product that we will be using today is going to be the acrylic glacier resin and hardener. And this is available on Amy Howard at Home. And we will also be using some one step paint in Bauhaus buff or ballet white. You will need some clean slate to clean your countertop or the project that you're working on with. Uh, you will need some pigment powders and today I have chosen pigment powders in Strasbourg white, Scandinavian gray, and Noor. And I'm also going to be using a mica powder and this is deep gold. Also, you'll need some gloves. You'll want to protect your hands when working with resin. You'll also want to wear a face mask, an N95, or a respirator if you have one. The odor is not terribly strong, and I don't find it very offensive, but protect your health. It is non-toxic, and work in a well-ventilated area. I'm not going to wear this today because it's really hard to talk to you with this on. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to do, and I have already done this just for the sake of time, is you're going to need to finish your sample and you can use one of these serving trays as a sample or you can purchase one of these wooden can uh, frames that people paint on this side, but we're going to work on the reverse because you have a frame and that will give you a border for your resin. So just purchase something like this. You can get them at any local craft store or Walmart Target type store. I think Dollar General even carries some things like this. So um, you'll need something to do your sample on. You will need a hair dryer. That is going to serve as your paintbrush. So the first thing that you want to do is you're going to need to coat your surface in a coat of one-step paint. I've already done that for the sake of time today, but when you do put your paint onto your piece, you want to make sure you're doing it with a high-density foam roller. You don't want to use a brush and you don't want to use a, a nap roller or anything that's going to leave a texture or brush, mark, brush marks because you will see it in your final finish. Um, you may need two coats if your countertop is a dark color. You want to make sure that you get it very well covered and allow that to dry. Um, also, I don't think I told you, clean your project really well before you start with your clean slate. This will get off dirt, grimes, oils, waxes, 
anything that is on that countertop that's been on that countertop for decades, like this one down here, and get that surface very well cleaned and prepped before you start your finish. You do not have to clean that off. You can just wipe it on, clean your piece well, and then allow it to sit and it will just evaporate off. So we've already um, done our board and it's painted. And the next thing that we want to do is we're going to pour up our resin. Resin comes in two parts. It comes in the resin itself and then it comes with the hardener. They're packaged individually, but they come as a set. You're going to need both. You cannot use one without the other. Once you add the hardener into the resin, it's going to start setting up in about 30 minutes and get tacky and you'll no longer be able to work with it. So once you mix this up, you have a work time of about 20 minutes. So it does go fairly quickly, but you have plenty of time to do everything that you need to do. So one of the important things when you are mixing up your resin, I'll turn this down for you here, is I have already poured my resin and my hardener into my cups here. When you're working with resin, make sure that you are using something disposable. You don't want to try to clean out resin from something that you want to keep. So use some disposable cups, something you can just throw away. And when you measure this out, they have got to be equal amounts of each. You can't have a little bit more of one than the other. It will not set up properly and it will always feel tacky, like it just never completely dried. So make sure that you have equal amounts of each one of your products. The resin is extremely thick. It is a very thick product. The hardener is a little bit more fluid and easier to pour. So when you mix these, I like to just pour the hardener into the resin. And you can see how easy that pours out. And one of the most important things on this is when you get these two mixed together, you're going to have to stir this for a full three minutes. And so we're going to start to stir here. Once you mix these two together and you start stirring this up, it's going to go a little cloudy. You can see there how it's kind of becoming cloudy. And that is perfectly fine. That is normal and to be expected. You do not want to stir so vigorously that you get a lot of bubbles. So gently stir it for a full three minutes. Also the same thing with stirring this. If you do not stir it for the three minute length of time, your finish is never going to feel like it completely dried. So you want to make sure this is very important. So while I am stirring this, I want to talk to you a little bit about the product and about the resin. When you purchase your package, your kit, you get 16 ounces of resin and you get 16 ounces of hardener. Together that makes 32 ounces when they're mixed together and that will cover a square feet, a total square feet of eight, eight total square feet of countertop. Um, so that will give you an idea of how much that you will need to purchase. Also, this resin has a UV protectant in it, so you can use it outdoors, and the sunlight will not yellow it, it will not hurt it, and it will not change it in any way. So you're perfectly fine to use this on an outdoor patio table or serving tray or whatever you need to use. It is also impervious to heat, so you can set a hot pan on it or a hot cup of coffee, a hot pot of coffee, and it's not gonna affect your serving piece and it's not going to affect your countertops one bit. It can take it.
And we are almost done stirring up our resin. So anytime that you're creating a new finish, you want to make sure that you do a sample so that you understand how to properly do the finish and you can make sure that your colors are turning out like you had envisioned. Okay, we're going to stir just a little bit longer and then we will be ready to mix our colors. This is very versatile. You can choose any colors you want to. If you want to go and pick out a sample of marble or granite that you like, you can do that and then you can come back and you can recreate this finish using different colors of pigment powder. So you can get any look that you want with this. Okay, so now that we have got this stirred up well, we're gonna mix our colors. Our main color is white, so we'll be mixing, uh, the biggest portion of this will be our white. And I'm gonna take a clean cup. And you wanna make a paste first. So I'm gonna pour just about a tablespoon of my resin into the cup. Maybe just a tad more. And then we'll add our white pigment powder. When you're adding your colors to your resin, which you see what I'm doing here, you never want your coloring to be more than 6% of the total volume. If you get too much or you don't get it stirred up properly, you will see the granules of pigment in your final finish. That's all I'm using, that tiny little bit right there. So I'm gonna mix that in very well and see if I like the color. Kind of like when you're cooking, you can add more, but you can't get it back. So just be careful with it. And that made a very pretty white color. You wanna make sure that you have all of that pigment dispersed into your resin that it's incorporated well, all of your pigments are dissolved. And you might can mash it against the cup a little bit if you need to. And just make sure those are very well mixed up. You can see that tiny little bit gave us a really pretty white color. And then we're going to add most some more of our resin here. We're gonna save a little bit because we have to mix up our other two colors. Okay, and we're just gonna stir that together. Stir that around. Okay, so we have a very nice white. Now we're going to mix up our Scandinavian Gray and Nor. These pigment powders are natural pigments and they are sourced from Provence and they are very concentrated so you don't need very much. We're going to just put that tiny bit in there. This is our Scandinavian Gray. And then we're gonna pour about a tablespoon of our resin into this cup and mix that up. And this will give us a real pretty dark gray color. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. You can always add more, you just can't get it back if you add too much, obviously. Okay, and stir that into that. And then we're going to mix up our black, which is the Noor. And so we'll put just a tiny bit, look at that, how concentrated and how, how deep of a color that is, it's beautiful. And we just need a little bit of this black. Just 
just a tiny bit. I mean, not much at all. It takes hardly any. And we will pour about a tablespoon of resin. Now, if you're working on a larger surface, obviously, you will need to mix up more of your colors. But since we're just walk working on a small sample board today, we don't need that much. I'm going to pour the rest of this resin in here into my white. Make sure I have enough to cover my surface. Okay, so once we have all this mixed up, we are going to pour our resin into our tray. This pours very, very nicely. It has a self-leveling agent in it, so it's going to become level as it sits. And now you want to take a foam brush and we're just going to kind of move this around and get our tray covered. Get into the corners, into the edges of your tray, and just kind of spread that around and it will level itself as well. Make sure that you don't have any holes or any spaces. You've got everything covered well. When you're working with resin, make sure that you use some disposable cups and like this foam brush, you can just throw it away. And do wear your gloves and I forgot to put mine on. And I'm gonna do that now because I'm gonna need them. Okay, and that's it. It's very easy to do that. I just like to go through and make sure I have everything covered well. And I don't have any spots that are not filled in. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna put my gloves on. And then we can let that sit there for just a minute or two and level itself out. I see one little spot there that, now if you have a few little bubbles, that's okay. Once you put heat on it, those will pop. And then we're gonna take our colors and I'm gonna start with my Nor, the black you don't need a lot of black. And we're just gonna pour some of this resin in a line across our board, just like that. Okay. That's it, that's all you need there. Let's get this back where you can see a little bit more what I've done here. And then we'll take our Scandinavian gray. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna pour some of this underneath our black here. If you get a couple of little spots that it drips, that's okay. We're gonna blend this all together. Okay, this is the fun part. We're gonna take your hand and your fingers, make sure you have a glove on, and we're gonna marble this. Just like you are marbling a cake. You're gonna take it around and just marble it back and forth. We're not doing any 
composition or any veining or anything right now. We're just marbling that finish. And then you want to take your glove off and you'll need to put a new one on. Got a little resin on the side of my tray there. I might have to wipe that off. All right, this is a fun part as well. You get to take your blow dryer, your hair dryer, and you're gonna start moving this resin around. You're just gonna move it. I start on low, and you're just gonna kinda start pushing that out, blending that a little bit. And it really starts to look like marble and it becomes starts to look very natural. You want to stay mostly in a linear fashion as you're moving this around. And just blend those colors together and blend your... until you get it to where you like the look of it. with that. I, I think that looks looks very nice. I'm very happy with how that's turned out. And you can continue to work on this and move this around. You don't want to blend it too much. And then another thing that you can do, you can come back after you have all of that blended in, you can come back and you can add a little bit of some mica powders. These mica powders are very concentrated but they are very, very beautiful. You're not gonna need much, just a pinch, and you're just gonna kinda of just sprinkle that around onto your surface. I'm using deep gold. You can use any of the colors that you want. I think there are seven available. And you don't wanna overdo it on that. You don't want very much at all. Then you can take your blow dryer again, and you're just going to start moving those mica powders around a little bit. It really adds a little extra something to your finish. When you do colors and you're doing this finish, you want to stay with no more than three colors. White or your base color is considered one of those three. So you can do white or your black or whatever other color that you're using. Stay with three colors and no more than one mica.
Okay. And that's it. I don't know if you can see it as well. But I like the gold in there. It's very pretty. That was easy, wasn't it? It's much easier than you thought it was going to be. It's a very easy finish to, to do. And you can do this at home. And I want to thank you for being here with me today and for sharing this time and allowing me to come into your home and share this new product and this new finish with you. I know you are going to create some beautiful pieces with it and you're going to enjoy working with it. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to have been here. Enjoy the rest of the paint-a-thon, all the new finishes that are out there, all the new products that are being introduced. And please enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time. Bye-bye.